It's important to make the right choices in life, and there's something called redemption that helps you to cope with a troubled past. Our next guest is on the road to redemption after serving time in prison as a child. Her goal now is to help make Orlando a better and safer place. Welcome to Legal Connections, Katherine Jones. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Tell us about the Orange County Task Force. Um, one, it was an honor to even get invited. I was the first person to be on that panel that was directly impacted, which I thought was really important because who better than a child that had perpetrated harm or gun violence to be able to say, this is how we can prevent this from happening again. And so it was an honor to be there and to be among some great thinkers and innovators to make recommendations on how to stop the youth violence that has been happening in Orange County. And for the benefit of the audience, can you just give us a, a brief explanation of what got you to that point where you were a part of that program? Um, I was invited by um, Coach Ruben Saldana, who mm -hmm. set, was a credible messenger, also directly impacted, um, and somehow was unanimously voted in to take his spot now that he is actually on staff in Orange County and couldn't participate. And I stepped into it wholeheartedly, super excited to be able to bring about local change in my community and, and help the youth here. And you're what they consider to be a credible messenger. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, another thing that I do that's super exciting because um, I see a reflection of myself in these youth. Um, so many are coming from impoverished, marginalized communities and the ones that society gives up on and say that you know they're not going to amount to anything they're already writing them off because their parents are incarcerated or they're coming from poverty and i i know from experience that all it takes is the right person to step into their life mm -hmm. and mentor them and show them their value and tell them they're worth something that they deserve love and respect and to be able to play that role in these youth's lives and see them turn around and so far credible messengers all of the children that have been involved in the program have not um, re-offended or gotten into any more trouble because they have another outlet now and they have a group of people that believe in them. Mm -hmm. And just again, for the benefit of the audience, you and your brother had, had a, you were charged as adults mm -hmm. for murder. And, and how old were you? 13. 13. And he was 12. And what do you say now when you see all these stories about gun violence and kids with guns in schools? What are your thoughts? When I asked the question that I wish would have been asked with me um, why? Why? Instead of just looking at the sensationalized headlines that mm -hmm. come that, you know, we have these youth that have no hearts and no regard for human life. I know from experience that no 12, 13, 14, 15 year old wakes up one day and says, you know what, I just want to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, they're coming from a place of trauma mm -hmm. and impulsiveness. Their brains aren't fully developed and they're responding out of that trauma and hurt. So my question is always why? What happened to this baby, this mm -hmm. child that makes them feel like their only recourse, their only resolution to whatever it is they're going through is violence? And that's why I do the credible messenger work because we look at the why and try to touch into those areas of trauma and give them healing so that they know there are other options because I didn't think there were at 13. Mm -hmm. At 13, the system had failed. The, the, the criminal courts, the probation officers had a pedophile living in my house mm. that allowed me to be subjected to sexual abuse. The schools had reported it, the teachers had reported it, and nothing happened. I was never protected. Mm. And so it makes me look at these kids and say, where, where did the system fail them? Where did the adults in their life fail them? Where did the community fail them? And that leads back to the task force because it takes a community and recommendations implemented by our local government to prevent these children from going down that path. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I'm really just happy to see you. And, thank you. Um, recently became aware of the circumstances, but what an opportunity for you. Is it one-on-one -on -one counseling when you go? What is it like? Give us uh, sort of a glimpse into the work that you're doing. Well, I have two um, young girls that I'm assigned to that I mentor one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like a first aid responder. If they, if they need to talk, if mm -hmm. they're going through a hard time, the challenges that they're facing in school and they want to talk, then I'm available for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We um, have youth events that we attend to with our mentor mentees. Um, and it's, 
it's transformative to them because a lot of these kids come from background where they don't have stable parents or mm. um, a support system and now they do they have an outlet that's positive um, coach does MMA training and they're able to channel their aggression and their anger in a positive way a positive outlet and it's been super successful Oh my goodness, That's, that sounds like a wonderful program and what a resource for the kids and mm -hmm. the community as a whole because, mm -hmm. you know, the village mentality that we're everyone's kids. Absolutely. Um, so do you, what, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, all of our kids, no matter what they've done, no matter their race, no matter their socioeconomic status, they all deserve to be loved and they're all children, no matter what they do. And the, the answer is not when they do something wrong to put them on a trajectory to spend the rest of their lives in prison. I didn't become who I am today because prison worked. Mm. I came, became who I am in spite of prison mm. because pr being incarcerated into an adult prison at 13, 14 was the most traumatic thing I ever experienced in life. So you have an already traumatized child being subjected to more trauma wow. and somehow expecting them to come home and be productive members of society. Mm. It's counterproductive. It was only my mentor who changed, that came into the prison in a ministry that changed my life, and that's why I'm so dedicated to mentoring, because it doesn't take um, the Martin Luther Kings and the Malcolm X's to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the ability to change the trajectory of someone's life if they're willing to take the time and energy. And so everyone become a mentor without the label. You don't need the label, but just to be a positive influence in someone's life, it's important. Everyone's efforts matter. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point, and thank you for saying that. Yeah. So good to have you on. Thank you again, Catherine, for sharing a bit of your story and your work. And we hope to see you and hear more about your work soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. There's more Legal Connections coming up after this. Stay with us.